Richard Cantarella, a.k.a. Sheila Head, born 1944, was a New York mobster who became a Cooper regime for the Bonanno crime family and later a government witness. Biography Cantarella was born to Italian parents on the Lower East Side, Manhattan and raised in Knickerbocker Village, a public housing development that was home to many Bonanno family members. A skinny kid with jet black hair, Cantarella got the name Sheila Head from his hair pomade. Cantarella was married to Loretta Castelli and they had a son, Paul Cantarella. As a young man, Cantarella was introduced to the Bonanno family by his uncle, mobster Alfred Embarado. Embarado controlled the distribution center for the New York Post through local union of newspaper workers. In 1963, Embarado obtained a job for Cantarella at the post as a delivery truck driver. However, Cantarella and his cousin, Bonanno mobster Joseph D. Amico, actually served as enforcers on the newspaper's loading docks, jobs they would perform for over 30 years. From 1988 until 1991, Cantarella was a so-called tail man, a worker who rides on the back of the delivery truck and unloads the newspaper bundles. However, Cantarella never showed up for work. He paid a laborer $20 a night to do his job while Cantarella collected his $700 a week in wages. Mazio execution During the late 1970s, Cantarella became involved in criminal activities with Manhattan City Councilman Richard Mazio, the director of real estate for the city of New York's Marine and Aviation Department. Mazio dispensed leases for newsstands and parking lots at the Staten Island Ferry Terminals in Lower Manhattan and Staten Island. In return for granting leases to certain individuals, Mazio received large kickbacks. Cantarella told Mazio that a newspaper vendor at the Lower Manhattan Terminal was operating an illegal sportsbook operation. This information allowed Mazio to break the vendor's lease and evict him. In return, Mazio installed Cantarella as the vendor's replacement. By the 1980s, Cantarella controlled newspaper stands in both terminals. Cantarella and Mazio became close friends and briefly shared an apartment in Upper Manhattan. The two men made hundreds of thousands of dollars on their lease scams. In 1983, Mazio lost his job as director, was convicted of tax evasion charges, and sent to jail for six months. Mazio started using illegal drugs and Cantarella started worrying that Mazio might become a government witness. After consulting with other Bonanno members, Cantarella decided to murder Mazio. On the evening of November 14, 1983, Cantarella, Embarado, D'Amico, and Patrick Romanello met Mazio at a sanitation garage in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Mazio was meeting them at the upstairs garage office about a possible job. As the men walked down the stairs, Cantarella shot Mazio in the head. After shooting and stabbing the body several times, they loaded it into a black plastic bag and dumped it. Mazio's body was discovered five days later. Mere execution in 1981, the Bonanno family was rocked by the revelation that one of their associates, Donnie Brasco was actually a Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI undercover agent named Joseph Pistoni. Cantarella's cousin Anthony Miro was among those responsible for introducing Brasco into the family. After the family executed Capo Dominic Napolitano, another Brasco friend, the terrified Miro went into hiding. Joseph Mazzino ordered Miro's two cousins Joseph D. Amico and Cantarella, and Alfred Embrado. On February 18, 1982, D'Amico lured him to a parking garage in Lower Manhattan. Embarado and Cantarella were waiting in a getaway car. The pair went to the parking garage, climbed into Mira's car, and drove up to a locked security gate. D'Amico would later describe in a testimony, he took out his key, put it in the box, but he didn't get a chance to turn the box. I shot him at close range several times on the side of his head. Family crime wave beginning in 1991, Cantarella started using his son as an accomplice in many of his criminal operations. In 1994, Cantarella and other mobsters kidnapped a wealthy businessman at his office, drove him home, 
forced him to deactivate the burglar alarm system, and robbed him of cash, jewelry and other valuables. They also forced the victim to start paying protection money to Cantarella. Cantarella also extorted $250,000 from another businessman, using part of the money to purchase a Pontiac convertible automobile for Loretta. Perino execution in 1992, the state of New York started investigating allegations of racketeering and fraud at the New York Post. The target was the Bonanno family and its control of the newspaper. During the investigation, the family became concerned that Robert Perino, a delivery superintendent at the paper, would cooperate with prosecutors. Perino had been operating a number of criminal scams at the post, victimizing both fellow employees and the company. Perino's main contact with the Bonanno family was Salvatore Vitali. Vitali approached Cantarella and asked him if he would murder Perino. Vitali suggested to Cantarella that he could take Perino's job at the post. Cantarella, a lifelong friend to Perino, raised no objections. Vitali then told Bonanno consigliere Anthony Sparrow that Cantarella wanted to eliminate Perino. Sparrow gave Cantarella permission. On May 5th, 1992, Perino was lured to a Bonanno club in Bensonhurst, where he was murdered. In December 2003, Perino's skeleton was excavated from the floor of a construction company in Staten Island. Perino had been shot multiple times to the head. Cantarella was eventually convicted of grand larceny for his no-show job at the post and served seven months in prison. Government witnessed with Vitali's conviction in 2001, Cantarella became acting under boss for the family. Unknown to Cantarella, however, he had become a target of an unorthodox FBI investigation. Jack Stubbing, the head of the FBI's Bonanno squad, had been at a loss to find a way to bring down Mazzino. He ultimately persuaded his bosses to let him borrow Jeff Sowlett and Kim McCaffrey, a pair of forensic accountants normally used on fraud cases, believing that they could pinpoint participants in the family's money laundering schemes. He believed that enough conspirators would be frightened by the prospect of long prison terms that they would easily be willing to cooperate. After two years, the effort paid off when McCaffrey and Sowlett discovered that Mazzino, Vitali and Cantarella were partners in several parking lots owned by parking lot mogul Barry Weinberg. Cantarella's stake was held in the name of his wife, Loretta. The Bonanno squad put Weinberg under surveillance, and discovered Weinberg and one of his friends, restaurant owner Augustino Scarazzari, frequently met with Cantarella and his crew. While this was going on, McCaffrey and Salet found evidence that Weinberg hadn't filed tax returns in over a decade. In the process, evading over $1 million in taxes. They collared him in January 2001 and told him that he was headed to prison unless he turned state's evidence and obtained evidence against Bonanno mobsters. While being debriefed, Weinberg revealed that Cantarella had wrung a total of $1.25 million in extortion payoffs from him much of it laundered through Scotzari's restaurant. Confronted by the FBI, Scotzari also agreed to become an informant. Over the next few months, Weinberg and Scotzari recorded over 100 tapes of incriminating statements from Cantarella and his crew. While Cantarella broke off contact with Weinberg in the fall of 2001, he continued talking freely with Scotzari well into the summer of 2002 presumably because Scahazari was Italian. While talking with Scahazari, Cantarella made several incriminating statements about Mazzino. Largely on the strength of Weinberg and Scotzari's tapes, on October 2, 2002, Cantarella was arrested and indicted on a 24-count RICO indictment. Among the specific acts were the Perino murder, arson, kidnapping, loan sharking, extortion, illegal gambling, and money laundering. Loretta and Paul Cantarella were also indicted on racketeering charges. While in prison, Cantarella learned that Capo Frank Capa, also arraigned in the October Roundup, had become the first member of the Bonanno family ever to become an informant. Capa told investigators that Cantarella had bragged about his role in setting up the Perino hit, as well as being the getaway driver in the Mirror hit. 
realizing that Cop A's testimony would all but assure that he would die in prison. In December 2002, Cantarella accepted a plea bargain deal and became a government witness. Loretta and Paul also accepted plea deals. In early 2003, Masino realized that Cantarella had become an informant. In June 2004, Cantarella testified at Massino's racketeering trial. Earlier, he told investigators that Masino was displeased with Vitali and wanted him whacked. On the stand, he admitted his own role in the 1983 Mazio killing. Also in 2004, Cantarella testified that he attended the Bonanno family induction ceremony for Perry Chris Gitelli, who was then the president of the Feast of San Gennaro Association. In July 2007, Cantarella testified at the murder and racketeering trial of Bonanno mobster Vincent Bosciano. Leaving witness protection in April 2017, Oxygen Channel launched Unprotected a reality television program starring the Cantarella family, chronicling their attempt to start their lives over again after having opted out of witness protection. Further reading Criddle, Simon, The Last Godfather, The Rise and Fall of Joey Masino Berkeley, March 7, 2006, ISBN 0-425-20939-3. References